Good morning, fellow gauchos. Welcome to the beautiful campus of UC Santa Barbara. I'm glad everyone made the journey over from Isla Vista this morning. I'm sure not your usual Saturday morning trek. Uh, I'm both honored and humbled to be here today to participate in one of life's big moments for all of the graduates and their families. I still remember the day Dr. Virgil Ealings delivered my commencement speech. And while I don't have a lecture hall or a park named after me, I hope sharing a few memories and observations today may be meaningful to you like Dr. Ealings were meaningful to me. Your experience at UC Santa Barbara will stay with you for the rest of your life in a way that few other experiences will. Most four-year periods will blend together or get lost in the shuffle, but your years at UCSB certainly will not. Many of you arrived on this campus as teenagers and will depart as adults. Not only have you grown and matured during these years, but you've discovered some of the most critical skills to success. This year marks the 20th year since I stepped onto this campus as a freshman biology student. That year was 1999, and there was no Instagram, no Spotify, no Gmail, and Netflix only delivered DVDs in the mail. You guys probably wouldn't have recognized this campus with half the number of buildings, but it was still the same great place then as it is now, and we did still have Freebirds. <laughs> Sometimes I can't remember what day of the week it is or whether I remembered to lock the door, but I remember some of the smallest details about my time here on campus. I remember the tool boards from the campus bike shop where I worked, and the room numbers like Chem 1179. <laughs> yeah. Even though I haven't set foot in those places for over 15 years now. I remember the smell of the new books in the USEN bookstore and the smell of the old books in the Davidson Library. <laughs> and of course, the entertainment of watching students navigate the bike path crossings and the roundabouts. So as memorable as your UCSB experience has likely been, tomorrow will be the start of a new phase in life. It will be hard to beat the atmosphere and location here on campus, but you may not miss the exams or the 8 a.m. classes. Tomorrow's journey will be distinct and different from your years here at UCSB. Whether that next phase includes a new job, the start of graduate studies, or a trip around the world, it will be full of new challenges and new opportunities. And while some transition points like today's are obvious, sometimes it's more difficult to know when life slips from one phase to another. For example, sometimes I wonder, when did I get so old? And when did you guys become so young? My five-year-old is a proud gaucho over at the Orfila Children's Center on West Campus. And it's hard for me to believe that he's closer in age to most of you than I am. I guess time flies. As the dean said, my path through UCSB included a unique experience that presented plenty of opportunities and challenges and has transcended many phases of my life. Back at the turn of the century in my sophomore year, I entered into the technology management program's new venture competition. And unknowingly at that time, the results of winning that competition would become known as Inogen and become a defining portion of my life that I never saw coming. Inogen grew in phases from a student project to a med tech startup company to a struggling med tech startup company to a real medical device company trying to help oxygen patients improve their independence and mobility. And the company's most recent phase, marked by its initial public offering in 2014, and has continued to grow to this day. But when I was sitting in your seat, 
I didn't know what would come next. And you never know when something amazing is just around the corner. For example, I had no idea 2004 would be the year I would meet my wife and go to her commencement party at 6741 BP. <laughs> if any of you have been in the area. So my advice is to not try to predict the future or expend all of your energy trying to force the future to bend to your will, but rather to just prepare yourself for the future so that you'll be ready for those opportunities when they appear. When you were a child, what did you think you were going to do when you grew up? How did that compare to what you thought you were destined to do on your first day as a gaucho? And how about now as you peer forward into the next phase of your life? As you've moved from one phase in life to the next, you've successfully prepared for that next stage while still knowing exactly what would come next. For many of you, childhood led to grade school, which led to high school, which led to college, which led to today. But this day is a turning point where one phase ends and a new phase begins that may be much less defined than the ones in your past. And that's okay. Just don't let this transition be the end of your learning and growth. In my experience, the best way to prepare for the unknowns of the future is to focus on three areas. The fortitude and ability to solve problems, the drive and perseverance to not just work, but work hard. And lastly, a strong moral character of integrity, honesty, and loyalty. During my tenure at Inigen, we've hired over a thousand people. And the ones that have stood out over the years are the ones who solve problems, even when they may seem daunting or impossible. In any job or career, success lies at the end of a series of problems that will likely require you to learn new skills, approaches, and levels of patience to successfully overcome them. No matter what the nature of the problem you face in life, tackle it head on. Be persistent, be methodical, and be courageous. If there's one universal skill at this camp taught at this campus, I believe it is how to solve problems. I remember my toughest professor was Dr. Sears. I took four classes from him, and for each of his exams, they were open book. When I heard this on the first day of class, I thought it was great and class would be easy. I certainly learned this was not Dr. Sears' way of making easy exams, but quite the opposite. He made sure you had all the resources available so that he could justly challenge you with problems that you had never seen before. And the skills, confidence, and patience that I gained surviving Dr. Sears' exams have stuck with me through all these years. The problems I've faced have changed significantly from my days as a student, as Inogen grew from a startup to a larger organization. First it was chemistry, physics, calculus, and biology. Next came FDA design controls, product design, manufacturing then management, interviewing, hiring, and most recently, I've been studying organizational development, emotional intelligence, psychological safety, and how to survive on Wall Street. But I'm still working on that one. That's a tough one. But with your training from UCSB, I believe each of you has the resources and ability to tackle the problems that life throws at you if you're willing to put forward the necessary level of work. Hard work is a part of life that usually doesn't make for a catchy post on social media. We tend to see the results of hard work without truly understanding what occurred behind the scenes. In my experience, success and accomplishment are much more likely for those who approach life without expecting a trophy for participation. 
With that being said, my five-year-old soccer trophy is one of his prized possessions, and I'm immensely proud of his participation. So I'm not completely heartless. <laughs> one of the repeat experiences I've had hiring young professionals illustrates the point. The best candidates with very high GPAs would also go on to discuss their collegiate athletic program, or the job that helped put them through school, or the support they provided their families. These candidates were focused and applied themselves to a degree that most people would think impossible. The, this kind of perseverance and commitment to true hard work has its rewards and can be a game changer when applied consistently over one's life and career. The third element I associate with success is a high character standard built upon integrity, honesty, and loyalty. Becoming a person of high moral character is a lifelong endeavor with no finish line. Those people who take the high road, help others, and maintain their integrity in the face of challenge and struggle are the ones who will inevitably succeed over the long run and be genuinely respected as good people. There may be short-term success for those who practice office politics or seek to benefit at the expense of others, but I believe those are short-lived illusions of success at best. Problem solving, hard work, and moral character don't provide an ultimate path or direction to follow in life. They're merely the tools for success. The journey to find your passion or individual definition of success may take many years to come. Your families began your journey to be a good person and exemplified hard work. UC Santa Barbara has taught you, to be a good problem solver. And if you're sitting here today, about to earn your degree, you've probably got the hard work part figured out as well. Bringing these attributes together to accomplish your goals and be prepared for the future is up to you and begins tomorrow. However, tomorrow is still an entire day away so congratulations on the completion of an incredible milestone in life. And please enjoy this day of celebration at this beautiful campus and the time with your families. Thank you.